conservativity result using uh, uh, natural deduction uh, uh, and uh, kind of the double negation translation method for uh, eliminating uh, uh, double negations in the fragment that they consider. Uh, and there, is also, there are also two papers uh, by Jimmy Sciara, uh, who defines uh, inductively classes of, of sequence uh, of formulas and proves uh, the conservativity for uh, uh, for sequence in this class. And he also uses a generalization of the negation translation. Uh, I want to uh, add arguments which are as direct as possible. So I will now uh, recall, I already talked yesterday about the G3 calculi. Uh, now I will have a G3 calculi with the coding team. So you have already seen, actually, the, the rules that you have seen yesterday where rules for a system with labels. Here we have the basic, basic system uh, without labels. So we have uh, the, the, the rules, so this, these are the rules of uh, um, first of the classical logic. Uh, initial sequence are restricted to atomic formulas, rules with two premises, uh, shared context, and uh, well, then uh, all the rules are invertible. So, um, the rules for the quantifier, for the left, uh, for all, and the right exist at the repetition of the principal formula and the premise. And then uh, the intuitionistic calculus uh, is obtained as uh, a small variation. So this is an intuitionistic multi-succeeding calculus, a small variation of the classical calculus. And the only uh, rules that uh, differ from the classical ones are the rules for implication and the rule for uh, right universal. Uh, right implication and right universal are a uh, single succeeding premise. And the left implication as a repetition of the principal formula in the premise uh, to retain invertibility. Because otherwise the rule without, uh, without repetition will not be invertible. And for minimal logic, uh, one has to give up the, the Expanso axiom, and so one needs to add uh, the initial sequence that has uh, a bottom plus on the left and the right. Um, if uh, we add, uh, how do we add equality to a sequence calculus uh, to maintain uh, the good properties of the G3 systems? Uh, sequence calculus with equality uh, axiomatically is given by adding uh, the reflexivity and the replacement scheme. Uh, if we have the flexibility and replacement, uh, we also get the symmetry of equality and transitivity. In sequence calculus, the standard treatment uh, consists in uh, adding initial sequence that have uh, uh, reflexivity and the replacement. But if we add this initial sequence, we lose a cut elimination in the sense that we can have a generalized offset. So cut is pushed up to the initial sequence, but uh, it cannot be eliminated. So uh, one can see that cut elimination fails by showing that there is no, no cut free derivation symmetry, for example, with this. And also the structural rules of weakening and contraction have to be added. Then there is the method of uh, axioms in the context. And this is a method followed by Rebkov. Uh, structural properties are maintained, but proof analysis become complicated because uh, you may have arbitrary instantiations of the axioms. And then finally, the method of rules. Uh, so the rules for equality uh, are the rules of reflexivity and replacement. Uh, which are formulated as uh, left uh, rules. So uh, by um, the general method of extension with rules, we also need uh, an additional condition, which is called the closure condition, wherever to guarantee admissibility of contraction. Whenever we have a system with uh, rules uh, that have uh, some instance uh, where we have uh, a duplication uh, of formulas, uh, then also the rule where the, uh, the two duplications, uh, the duplications are contracted, must be a rule of the system. So if we consider just the system with equality, the only uh, 
the, the closure condition would give uh, an instance uh, of uh, reflexivity. So we don't have to add any, anything. Uh, but we do have to add uh, rules coming from the closure condition uh, if uh, we have also function symbols. Uh, with function symbols, uh, we have uh, uh, also a rule of substitution. But the rule of substitution, so uh, in functions, uh, equal arguments give equal uh, results is not uh, needed because uh, substitution is derivable from uh, reflexivity and replacement. So, in this way we obtain uh, uh, cut-free, contraction-free uh, systems for uh, first of the logic with equality, classical, intuitionistic, minimal, uh, which have uh, all uh, the good structural properties. Uh, in addition to admissibility of the structural rules, so we have uh, the admissibility, derivability of the replacement axiom, and also admissibility of the replacement rule for arbitrary formulas. The replacement rule was uh, limited to atomic formulas, but uh, the one with arbitrary formulas is uh, admissible. Uh, one uh, result that we have for this system is that uh, if uh, you have a derivative conservativity result, if you, have a, if you derive something in uh, the logic with equality that contains no equalities, then it is already derivable in the system without equality. And now we come to Glivenko classes. So Glivenko sequence classes are classes of sequence which are defined through uh, the polarity of uh, absent uh, connectives. Like for uh, our connotation uses uh, the symbol, uh, uh, the connective with the plus or the minus uh, to indicate uh, positive or negative occurrences of the connective uh, or, or quantifier in a sequence. Uh, what is, uh, does this uh, notation means? Uh, for example, uh, the formula A or not A uh, contains positive implication, negation is defined as implication, uh, contains a positive disjunction and a positive uh, function. Uh, if A contains uh, an implication, a positive implication, then uh, the formula contains a negative implication because negation changes the polarity. Also, the polarity is changed in sequence, so in the antecedent of a sequence, it changes the polarity. Here in, in the sequence, uh, P or not, uh, not P, uh, <coughs> Q, uh, we have that. Uh, um, this contains uh, a negative uh, falsity. Um, the first class of Orelco says that uh, if a uh, sequence does not contain positive implication or positive uh, universal quantifier, and it is derivable classically with i of the ratio n, then it is derivable also intuitionistically. And uh, if, uh, in addition, the sequence does not contain uh, negative uh, falsity, then uh, it is uh, derivable minimally. And uh, the, the proof of this result in this calculus is absolutely immediate because it is just enough to look at the rules. Uh, because of the restriction, uh, no rules that uh, violate uh, the condition of uh, no rules that differ between the classical and minimal calculus have been used, and so the derivation is already an intuitionistic or minimal derivation. And uh, uh, the second class uh, instead uh, is uh, about a single succeeding sequence that uh, does not contain positive implication or negative disjunction. If it is derivable classical, if it is derivable also minimal. Uh, what does it mean that it doesn't contain a negative disjunction? It means that, for instance, it can be a derivation in a theory that does not uh, contain a uh, disjunction like the, the theory of linearity. Um, so it may be partial, the theory of partial order, but not the theory of linearity. And uh, uh, we can also get a stronger multi-succeeding result of this second class 
if a sequence matrix succeeded does not contain positive uh, implication or negative disjunction, and it is derivable classically, then it is derivable intuitionistically. And uh, the result can be strengthened as usual for a minimal logic. And here we get a special case of, of the result that I mentioned by Schuttenberg and Sanyaka that said that if a formula without implication, a, a weird formula without implication gamma consists of formulas that contain this junction forcibly only in the negative part and implications only in the positive part, then a classical derivability is minimal. It, it is just a special case of uh, this result. And, uh, and then uh, we have another, another class uh, that is about a uh, sequence that don't contain, a single succeeding sequence that don't contain positive implication or negative uh, universal quantifier. And for those that we get uh, the uh, intuitionistic uh, and the minimal derivability if uh, uh, falsity is not in the, in the negative part. This result is about, uh, is a conservativity but not, not eye-preserving. And the reason is that the, it is proved not just by immediate inspection of the rules, uh, as the first one, but it requires a permutation and argument of permutation. So this is the only result of those uh, that belong to this reconstruction of the uh, records result that uses the, the, the permutation argument. So basically, one divides the derivation into two groups of, of rules. So there is the first, uh, first part of the derivation that uh, has uh, uh, the rules of equality, uh, the root, right rule of uh, conjunction, disjunction, uh, existential, and universal. And the lower part contains uh, the left uh, rules uh, for the connected uh, accepted universal. And because of, of this division of the derivation in two parts, uh, we, we, get, uh, we get the conservativity because for the first, for the first part, uh, the derivation is already an intuitionistic derivation. And, uh, So uh, the result, uh, the proof uh, goes to a lemma uh, that says uh, that the derivation can be divided into two, these two parts uh, and uh, by this permutation argument. And then, uh, so the, for the first part, the conservativity holds for the result about the second class. And for the second part, we just have rules which are identical in the intuitionistic and in the classical and minimal. Um, I this. Yes. So, yes. So then we come to the fourth class. Uh, if uh, we have a sequence that does not contain single succeeded negative implication, uh, positive disjunction, or positive existential, then classical derivability in the institutionalistic derivability and the usual strengthening for minimal. Um, and the, the proof of this result is simply the observation that the only rules that can produce a single succeeding conclusion from a multi succeeding premise are right disjunction, left implication, and right existential, but they are excluded by assumption. So all the sequences in the derivation are, are single succeeded. Uh, and so all the instances uh, of uh, the po all the potentially instances of the right implication or right universal are absent. And so we have the conservation result. And then uh, so there are the last three classes are uh, classes uh, for which uh, the conservativity trivially holds. So they, they are uh, the classes, the class of five, six, and seven, uh, we are, they are for single succeeding sequence that don't contain negative implication, uh, positive disjunction, positive universal, nor uh, positive uh, uh, positive implication with a possible exception of negation. 
and uh, uh, the reason why the conservativity holds is that uh, such uh, such symbols are never derivable classically, and so the result is empty. And there is a similar result for class six and, and class uh, class seven. I'm not going to spell them out here. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, there is also a result about uh, optimality, a kind of commerce uh, to the conservativity of the seven classes. If uh, uh, for a class of sequence, ca classical derivability gives intuitionistic derivability, then the class must be contained in one of the seven classes. And the way uh, this result is proved is uh, by uh, by contradiction, assuming that the class is not contained in any of the seven classes, and one contains a list of possible violations. For example, if it is not in class one, it must contain either positive implication or positive inverse. And one obtains a conjunction or disjunction of all the possibilities, and, uh, and then uh, uh, this, uh, this list is reduced by considering uh, inclusions uh, between some of the cases and considering the anti conservativity results. And uh, uh, in the end, uh, uh, there are sequences that correspond to each of uh, these classes of violations. And to show optimality, one has to show that uh, these sequences are derivable classically but not intuitionistically. So the result, the end result is that not included in any of the seven classes is not conservative. And uh, so in the end, one has to prove that, uh, as the counterexample, sequence of this form are not derivable intuitionistically. Again, uh, to show this result, the calculus uh, uh, G3 uh, gives a very easy way to show undervability just by faith, faith proof search. They are just exercises in uh, uh, proof search in this country. Okay, and uh, so uh, instead, uh, in order of approach, uh, the undervability is uh, quite laborious. So, uh, with the calculus G3I, instead, uh, it's just uh, just a simple exercise. The result can also be extended. Uh, by having rather than just uh, the theory of equality, uh, a theory that uh, um, contains existential quantifier and does not contain positive disjunction. Like, for example, the theory of uh, uh, directed relation. And the, the reason is that uh, if, uh, if uh, we have, uh, we have uh, such, uh, such a theory instead of equality, all uh, the permutation arguments are uh, continue to hold, uh, and, uh, and the results uh, that uh, are obtained just by inspection of the groups also continue to hold. But now I come uh, to the conversion of... Uh, so this was the first part, so conservativity through the choice of uh, inappropriate uh, uh, sequence arguments. And now uh, the second part uh, I will show that one can obtain conservativity results by the method of conversion of axioms into rooms. Um, so there is a preliminary thing to say that it was believed that, it, well, it was believed, it is a true fact that the cut elimination fails in the presence of, of proper axioms. And there is a counterexample of the proof theory logical complexity of a derivation, so in a theory where you have an axiomatic sequence, A implies B and A, you can derive B, but you don't have a country derivation of the sequence B. But instead, it is needed to see that if you convert these two axioms into inference rules, then the inference rule implies B corresponds to this rule, and this is the and then you can get the cut free derivation of B. Um, this method can be uh, extended to treat universal axioms uh, or um, universal, universal axioms translated to conjunctive normal form 
uh, can be translated into uh, conjunction of universal closures of, of uh, uh, implications between conjunction of atomic formulas and disjunction of atomic formulas. And in turn, this can be uh, translated into, into a rule of, of this form. And uh, this can be extended to a much wider class of axioms, the coherent and the geometric implications. <coughs> Uh, coherent and geometric implications uh, are defined as starting from uh, form formulas, formulas which are built uh, uh, through conjunction of atomic formulas, and uh, uh, we get then a coherent formula by adding uh, uh, disjunction, uh, conjunction, and existential quantifier. And uh, uh, a geometric formula added to coherent formulas possibility of infinite disjunction. And we have the coherent implication. The coherent implication is the universal closure of an implication between coherent formulas. And the geometric implication is a uh, universal closure of implication between geometric formulas. Uh, it is particularly useful to, uh, to use a normal form for coherent implications. Uh, they are equivalent to finite conjunction of sentences uh, of the form uh, conjunction of atomic formulas and the final disjunction of existentially quantified or form, or formulas. Uh, and a similar normal form also for uh, a geometric implication where you have instead a possibly infinite conjunction of sentences where on the uh, succeeded top implication you can have a possibly infinite disjunctions. And uh, uh, I come to set some examples uh, of uh, coherent theories. Uh, universal formulas are, uh, can be seen as a final conjunction of a coherent implications in the, the, the axiom of the theory of fields is a, a, a coherent axiom, also the axiom of local rings, uh, the theory of transitive relations, of partial order, of strongly directed relations, uh, they are all coherent axioms. And um, now uh, the Bars theorem, the first order Bars theorem, uh, says that uh, if uh, a coherent implication is provable classically in a coherent theory, then it can be proved intuitionistically. Um, and if there are no uh, negative occurrences of, of falsity, even minimally. Uh, when we have uh, the system that uh, we produce and uh, uh, G3 calculus, uh, this result reduces uh, to a proof theoretic triality because the classical proof uh, is already an intuitionistic proof because uh, of the form of the conclusion, uh, geometric uh, implica coherent implication, and because of the form uh, of the rules added to represent uh, the coherent theories, uh, none of the rules that belong to the classical calculus uh, but are different uh, from uh, the intuitionistic rules. So none of the rules that violate the intuitionistic restrictions can have been used. And so the proof is already, and there is no need for translations for anything, just an inspection of the, of the derivation. And uh, it is possible also to generalize this, this result to uh, for theories axiomatized by formulas that do not contain negative occurrences of implications uh, or universal quantifiers. And this is done uh, by using the general white geometric implications that I mentioned yesterday. Um, so they also they also give a Greenback class. And now we come to examples of geometric theories, so the infinitary uh, theories, uh, the, the axiom of uh, the theory of torsion of abelian group is a geometric one, the theory of Archimedean of the field, or the theory of uh, connected graphs. Prime two points, either they are equal or there is a, 
the path to recognize them on the level. Also, uh, common knowledge is a geometric theory. So common knowledge is the, the uh, systemic theory uh, in which we have a common knowledge operator. Common knowledge says that uh, everybody knows and everybody knows that everybody knows and this is uh, iterated uh, infinitely many times. And uh, uh, the reason why it can be given as a geometric theory is that uh, it is uh, when, uh, when we analyze this theory in, uh, in terms of possible rule semantics, so the common knowledge operator is a uh, kind of modality. And uh, the accessibility relation for this modality is obtained by taking the transitive closure of the accessibility relation of uh, all uh, the uh, the individuals. Uh, so this is the slide uh, we have uh, the uh, definition of transitive closure. And this is a, this is a geometric, uh, ge can be defined as a geometric formula by replacing the quantification of a natural number by uh, a, an infinitary, infinitary discharge. So uh, other examples uh, of uh, uh, geometric theories, uh, coherent and geometric Sometimes the theory is not in itself uh, uh, coherent or geometric, uh, and one uh, needs uh, to modify the basic notions uh, to get uh, to get a geometric a geometric theory. For example, uh, <coughs> then if we formulate the axiom of fields as uh, every non-zero element as an inverse, this is not a geometric uh, because uh, there is uh, any uh, an implication in the negative part, so the negation in the antecedent of an implication. But if this is replaced by the axiom that any element is either zero or it doesn't invert, this is, this is the geometric. Uh, Robinson arithmetic, every, every non-zero element is a successor, is not a geometric, but the equivalent form, any element is either zero or it is a successor, is a geometric. Or the axiom of real cross field, a polynomial of, uh, uh, of odd degree as a root. Uh, well, to say that the test of odd degree, we can either say that the, the highest, the odd coefficient of the highest term is, uh, if it is non-zero, then there is a root, but we can also say that it is either zero or there is a root, and, and this is geometric, coherent, actually. Then there is classical projective geometry that is not a geometric theory uh, because the axiom of existence of three non-collinear points uh, violates the form of geometric theories. But uh, also here yeah, one can uh, modify the basic notions uh, instead of taking equality, primitive notion of partners, instead of taking not belonging to a line, a notion of outsideness of a point from a line, one takes a uh, uh, geometric axiom. Uh, so for infinitary logic, uh, I want to extend the bus theorem to infinitary logic. And uh, the way to obtain a proof which is uh, as simple as the one for the finite case. And to do that, uh, one has uh, to first specify the syntax of the infinitary logic, uh, and then uh, in the sequence values, proof pattern in both an intuitionistic and the classical sequence calculus, and then to show that uh, the result, uh, the conservation result, uh, holds simply in a simple way. And again, also here, the result in itself uh, is very simple. Uh, well, but the, there is the preparation work, which is to prove that uh, the, uh, the calculi are cut free. So the infinitary logic, uh, we have, uh, we, we allow infinitary disjunction and infinitary uh, countable conjunctions. And uh, we define uh, a notion of uh, uh, depth of a formula. Here we have both infinitary disjunction and conjunction. They are interdefinable, but since we want to use uh, to 
nutritionistic calculus, we can adjust the minimal set to a minimal set of those that would work just for the classical calculus. Um, so we have a notion of depth of formula, which is defined by the uh, falsity and atomic formulas at depth one, and the compound formulas are uh, defined as uh, the depth is the success of uh, the depth of uh, uh, the, the supremum of the depth of the immediate subformulas. Um, this is an ordinal. And we have uh, what is important of this definition uh, is that uh, if you have a proper subformula, then uh, it, uh, it has a strictly smaller depth. Um, sequence for the infinitary calculus uh, are still mal finite multi sets of formulas. Don't consider the case. So there are also choices in which one takes uh, sequence with infinitely many formulas, but here they are just. Uh, uh, find it. And uh, the rules, uh, this is, uh, we have uh, rules uh, for uh, the rules for disjunction, for left disjunction, as infinitely many premises. And, uh, uh, and then there are infinitely many rules uh, for uh, right disjunction. Uh, so derivations uh, obtained by using these rules uh, have. Uh, um, are infinite trees, they have a countable branching, but uh, each branch has a finite length. And the leaves, as before, as in the finite free calculus, uh, are uh, sequences that uh, are either concluding on that falsity or initial sequence, so they have the same atomic formulas on the left and the right. And, uh, Derivations uh, in uh, the infinitary calculi are uh, have a notion of height, uh, and the height is still again uh, defined uh, as uh, in uh, uh, through the ordinals. Uh, an initial sequence uh, as height zero, uh, a sequence uh, which is uh, left falsity as uh, height one, and uh, if uh, we add the derivation uh, with the premises with height n, then uh, the conclusion is the derivation with height which is given by the successor of the supremum of the height of all the premises. So this, uh, this should be the uh, So in, by this definition, each derivation has a countable ordinal height and the subdivisions are strictly smaller height. Uh, here the definition of depth and height is different from the one which has been given, for example, by Pfeffer Manner that consider uh, the uh, for a uh, uh, rule with infinite many premises uh, the supremum of the successor of uh, the height of the derivations, which is different from the uh, successor of, of the supremum. And here is the calculus. So this is the calculus where I have highlighted in, in, in red the, the rules for the infinitary um, connectives. Um, the calculus, I said, is not minimal. And the reason why it's not minimal is that uh, we want to have an intuitionistic calculus which is as close as possible. And so we need, uh, for the intuitionistic calculus, we need the separate rules for, uh, for example, uh, for infinitary and finitary conjunction. And the reason is that uh, in, the, in the intuitionistic calculus, uh, we cannot uh, have uh, the right conjunction rule with uh, uh, the context uh, in the premise. The reason is that uh, the complete algebra the limit does not uh, distribute uh, over uh, John. And so it wouldn't give uh, something which is, uh, uh, with, which is intuitionistic. And, uh, well, this is an example of a derivation to obtain uh, the, the modern laws in the classical calculus.
curriculums. And uh, uh, so we wanted to extend this guideline for, the, for infinitary geometric theories. So the geometric theories are, are axiomatized by uh, geometric implications, which are this form, and uh, where uh, the antecedent is a finite conjunction of the formulas, and the succeeded is a finite uh, or countably infinite disjunction of uh, existentially quantified uh, conjunctions of atomic formulas. And uh, uh, this can be converted to a rule, a rule which is similar to the coherent rules, the rules that we have already seen, with the difference that uh, it has uh, uh, infinitely many premises that correspond to the, to the infinitely many disjunctions. And, uh, so uh, to show you how these rules of work uh, are found in practice, for example, that the uh, axiom of tors torsion of Dillon rules uh, will give uh, uh, this rule uh, with, uh, with infinitely many premises. Archimedean fields will give this rule, one premise for each natural number and uh, the, the axiom of phonetic graphs of this rule one rule for each length of the path. Uh, transitive closure, accessibility relation uh, will give uh, this, this rule. And uh, uh, do this rule really correspond to the axioms? So to show that the rules really correspond to the axioms, we have to prove that the axiom is derivable using the rule, and then conversely, that from the axiom, we can show that the rule is, uh, is derivable. So this is the derivation of the geometric axioms using the corresponding geometric rule. Uh, for the opposite direction, to move from axioms to rules, uh, we need to use cuts. So we need to prove uh, admissibility of the cuts show that uh, the, the rule comes uh, from the axiom because but this is what uh, I will do now so um, the, the path to show the structural properties uh, of uh, this uh, uh, calculus uh, for uh, infinitary logic extended with geometric rules uh, is uh, the, the same as the one for uh, the G3C calculate, uh, with the difference that now, instead of uh, having ordinary induction, we have transfinite induction. So all the properties uh, are proved by transfinite induction, but with a similar structure of the demonstrative argument as uh, we have for G3C. And, uh, and so we, we can prove uh, that uh, in the, for example, in the proof of cut elimination, we have a, a double induction on uh, uh, the size of the cut formula and the sum of the heights of the premises of cut. But now the sum is an ordinal sum, is uh, the uh, natural or assembled sum of the two ordinals. And so one proves uh, in this way that uh, the structural rules are admissible uh, and uh, weakening uh, and contraction and present admissible and cut admissible. Um, now, the infinite intuitionistic calculus is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, needs to have uh, both infinite disjunction and conjunction as primitive because uh, the duality is no, no longer old and also uh, we have uh, the right rule of infinite conjunction, which has the same restriction as the rule of right universal. Um, and this is the, um, the calculus, the intuitionistic calculus. As you see, the, I have highlighted the rules that differ uh, from uh, the classical calculus. So uh, the infinite right conjunction as a single, single succeeded premise, 
and also the writing implication, but this, this work already in, in the tuitionistic uh, factory cultures. And the repetition of the principal formula of gravity in the immutability in the left implication. So the uh, intuitionistic calculus uh, has uh, uh, the same structural properties as the classical calculus, except uh, uh, that some invertibility, invertibilities are missing. Uh, invertibility of right conjunction, the infinity conjunction, right implication, and right implication are not, uh, are not in that. All the other rules are represented. And then uh, uh, the structural rules are all missing. So, then, how does one prove uh, the infinite regards theorem? Uh, the theorem says that if a geometric implication is provable classically in a geometric theory, it is provable also intuitionistically. And uh, so the simple way to do that is to consider the classical theory, uh, which is axiomatized by uh, our finite or infinite or geometric we convert them into rules, as uh, I have shown you. And so we transform the classical theory into uh, cut free sequence calculus, which is equivalent to it. Uh, by the equivalence between the variability in, in, in the two systems. And, uh, and then we consider also the intuitionistic calculus. The intuitionistic calculus has the same theory part, so the geometric rules are the same. And the logic part is the part that has the uh, rules for conjunction, infinite conjunction, implication, and universe slightly changed. And then we have, again, uh, almost a trivial proof. If we have a geometric implication, which is derived classically in this geometric theory, it is also derived intuitionistically. The proof is just look at the form of the derivation of such a thing. Because of the form of the conclusion, no rules that uh, as a violation of uh, the intuitionistic restrictions cannot be used, exactly as the and so uh, the derivation is already an intuitionistic uh, derivation. And then uh, now finally I come up to the last part, uh, which is a little bit short, about the geometrization of first order logic. And this is a work in progress in part. Uh, so uh, we have that uh, the theory uh, is uh, a conservative extension of another theory. Uh, if uh, Every, every theorem of uh, the old theory is a theorem of the extended theory, and every theory of the extended every theorem of the extended theory uh, expressed in the language of uh, uh, the theory we started with is already a theorem of the small theory. So uh, instead uh, the, the reason for doing a, wanted to have a conservation result uh, is that uh, instead of, of uh, proving results in the smaller theory, it can be convenient uh, to prove them uh, in the larger one. And then uh, the conservation results said, says that this is not restrictive. Uh, the geometrization result says uh, that every first order axiomatic theory has uh, a conservative extension which is axiomatized by coherent uh, implications. So what this means uh, in practice is that uh, if uh, we have uh, a first order axiom, uh, we can find uh, a rule extension of uh, the classical calculus, uh, an extension with geometric rules, uh, such that the extension with geometric rules uh, derives the same things as uh, the calculus uh, with uh, uh, the axiomatic extension plus uh, uh, the structural rules. So if uh, we have uh, this result, since uh, this uh, R is uh, a set uh, of uh, geometric, uh, geometric rules, 
if uh, the gamma and of delta belongs to a suitable event class, uh, we also obtain uh, an extension of the conservation results uh, um, for an arbitrary theory axiomatized uh, by the first of the, first of the axioms. Um, and uh, yes, and this uh, concludes uh, the presentation.